Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ari and hopefully you'll stick around for a quick video. Okay guys, so I may have lied about the quick part. I don't know how long this video will be. I'm just kind of doing train of thought. Um, if you're like some of us, you may have been watching the Republican National Convention this past week. I personally did not watch it live. I watched snippets after because unfortunately the level of bullshit that I'm able to stand at one time I'm afraid that the RNC convention would have been on overload. So, if you watched it, uh, the whole thing started out uh, absolutely insane. We had um, Donald Trump Jr. looking like he had just snored at a line. We had Kimberly, Kimberly Guilfoyle, his girlfriend, who was doing a wonderful impersonation of a newscaster from North Korea. Um, God only knows what she had been on. But it was absolute insanity. And for a convention that they said they wanted to do a positive, uplifting message, it was the most frightening World War Z type of message that you could have possibly seen. It required that you totally forget that the person who has been in charge of our country for the past nearly four years is Donald Trump. Because they presented to us this nightmare, dystopian society where you have the crazies ravaging the streets. And, and, and they forget to mention that the person in charge of all of this is Donald Trump. And what we're being told to believe is if you give me four more years, I'm going to fix the problem. I'm going to change it because this is Joe Biden's vision for America. Well... It's not Joe Biden's vision for America. Again, who is the President of the United States? If you'd listened to this speech, you would think that Joe Biden was the incumbent and Donald Trump was running against him for a first term. It's not the reality of what's going on. Do we have violence in the streets? Yes, we do. But we need to seriously look at where that violence comes from. And it comes from a government under Donald Trump's control that chooses to do nothing about the problems in the country. People are taking to the streets because we have an epidemic, not only of COVID-19, but also an epidemic of police violence and brutality. You know, we have one black man being murdered right after another, in Kenosha, we literally had a black man being shot in the back seven times by police. And just a few days after this, when people are protesting, a 17-year-old right-winger with a, you know, weapon, a long gun, is able to walk through, start shooting people, get bottled water from the police, as a, and, and we even have them on video thanking these armed militiamen for coming to support them, the police officers, and he manages to get all the way back after murdering someone, after shooting people, he manages to get all the way back to his home and have a nice, you know, nap in bed before he's arrested the next day. Can you imagine any of this happening if this person were not white? It wouldn't happen. You, I mean, carrying a gun, let alone firing it, please. We have examples where black kids can't carry a BB gun without getting shot down. Hell, they can't even go to the convenience store and get a sweet tea or a lemonade and walk back home without getting shot down in the street. But a white right-wing teenager can walk through police shoot down protesters and still manage to get home and have a nice nap before he has to face the charges. This is the reality. This is why people are pissed off. You know, Donald Trump signs, I don't remember if it was an executive order or a bill, I can't remember. It was toothless um, about police brutality. And it was only about police brutality on the surface because it was like a reform bill or a reform executive order. It was all bullshit. But who did he have come on stage with him when this happened? Not the victims of police brutality. No, 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 no. He had police officers, representatives from the police officers union, which has fought hard against reform on stage. That's who he honors. When he talks about the death toll having to do with these protests, having to do with what's going on, 
He always talks about the poor, poor, downtrodden police officers. You know, those guys with the military-looking equipment that rove through streets and gun down black men. Um, and there are good police officers, but we shouldn't even have to say that. I mean, good police officers, that, that, that may sound fine, but let's look at the case of George Floyd. Those so-called good police officers, the one who didn't kill a black man, stood around and watched a bad police officer kill a black man and did nothing about it. If that's your definition of what makes someone a good police officer, that I don't actively kill people, I just watch people kill people, then you have a problem because that is not good. You know, a few bad apples, we hear the few bad apples thing. Few bad apples is a great excuse if you're talking about a manager at a retail establishment. It's a great excuse if you're talking about somebody working at the post office. It's a great excuse if you're talking about, you know, someone in the fast food um, joint down the road. It's a really bad excuse when you're talking about a job where those few bad apples carry guns, carry tasers, have the ability to lock you up, to almost with impunity murder you in the street. Those few bad apples, that's a serious problem. You know, a few bad apples might be something that we could deal with if it wasn't that those few bad apples were murdering people. If the few bad apples just got your order wrong at McDonald's, okay, let's chill the fuck out. But if the few bad apples gunned you down in the street, I imagine you're probably not all that concerned that it was just the few bad apples that did it and the rest were really nice that didn't kill me. So we have this convention and I want to talk about the politics of this moment because I know you're going to hear from, you know, opposing views from both the right and the left. And you've got some on the left that want to argue that Joe Biden is not progressive enough. And let me tell you, they're right. He's not progressive enough. He will not get us everything that we want out of this. If he's elected, will there be things that we as progressives will disagree with? Absolutely. He's not going to go far enough on it. But you know what? He's going to go a hell of a lot further in the right direction, the correct direction, than Donald Trump will ever take us. Take a look around at the shit show surrounding us right now, after four years, almost, of Donald Trump. Now, I want you to look back to the Barack Obama administration with Joe Biden in, vice pre in the vice presidency. Tell me there's not a stark difference here. It may not have been perfect. It may not have been what we wanted to a T. There were still mistakes. There were still things with immigration that we could have done better to welcome these immigrants into our country to stop criminalizing them. But you can't deny there is a stark difference in Barack and Joe's America and Donald's America. Donald Trump's America is one of violence. It's one where we use the United States military in order to go against U.S. citizens exercising their right to free speech and protest. That is not the America that we want. That is North Korea. That is Putin's Russia. That is not the right way to go. So I always like to use, I try to use the travel example when we're looking at voting. We have a choice. You know, there are two people on the ballot. It is Joe Biden or Donald Trump. Don't pretend, don't fool yourself into thinking there is some third option. There's not. I understand the desire for a third party to rise up, to have some competition here, some competing ideas. I think that's wonderful. Protest votes aside, this is not the time for one. Because you've got the choice. You can either... Get on the plane and get closer to the destination you want to go. Or you can get on the plane and crash and burn in the middle of the Atlantic. That's what Donald Trump is. Donald Trump is the crash and burn. Joe is the one who won't get us to our destination, but he'll get us a hell of a lot closer than we could have ever dreamed of under this administration. Your protest vote, that is going to give us Donald Trump. If you are not voting in this election for Joe Biden, you know, whether you like the guy or not, do not fool yourself. Voting against Joe Biden is voting for Donald Trump. You have a choice. 
You have a choice between a more fair, more equal America or a fascist dictator who, honestly, the way I want to describe it is he's a fascist fuck because he is trash. That is your option. Take it seriously. We cannot continue. We have an epidemic that has killed 180,000 plus people in our country. And yet, at his Republican National Convention, he had people on the White House lawn. God only knows we could spend all day talking about the use of the White House as a political backdrop, which is illegal. But, he had 1,500 people sitting in the White House lawn, inches apart from each other, no mask, no testing, and this is in the middle of an epidemic that has already killed 180 plus thousand people. And the infection rate, honestly, I haven't even kept track of it anymore. We're in the millions of people who are infected in the U.S. Do you remember what the last number was, Jeremy? Yeah, how many people are infected? It's so many millions, though. That's the death rate. I thought it was somewhere between 3 and 5 million. I've lost track. Sorry, asking my husband on that. But, anyway, what we have seen is an absolute ignoring of medical science, an absolute ignoring of reality in general. Open up your eyes. This is a dog whistle to the radical elements in our society. This is a Donald Trump who, when he says the White House, he means white. He means only white. That's why he didn't like it when we had a black man living there. That's why he was thrilled to run against him. That's why he brought up these bullshit theories that Barack wasn't born in the U.S. And now they're peddling some bullshit theories that Kamala isn't a U.S. citizen, which she is. But again, you notice the common denominator? Both of them have skin color a hell of a lot darker than mine. Isn't that a coincidence? No, he's got Stephen Miller in his White House, a white nationalist. This is not a Republican Party that is running the country. This is a white nationalist party. They're wearing the Republican label like they wore their Ku Klux Klan hoods. They're wearing that Make America Great Again hat and ask yourself, what is the America that they want to make us into? They want to make us into 1950s and earlier. They want to make it to where if you are a person of color, you know your place and you stay in your place. If you're a woman, you're barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen. If you're gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, you basically have no rights and they would like us thrown back in a mental institution so that somebody can electroshock therapy us and do all of this random bullshit. This is their America. An America where me and my husband aren't allowed to be married on, no, on a multitude of fronts. A, we're different ethnicities. We come from different backgrounds. And B, oh my God, a trans person. The scary ass trans person that they always like to make it out to be. Absolutely, his Make America Great Again is Make America Hate Again. And I'm done with it. Use your common sense. Pay attention to what's going on. Realize you have a choice. Quit with this ideology, this idealism of, well, I'm going to sit out till I get the perfect candidate. Then you're going to sit out forever. And you're going to let this country go straight down the damn drain. Stand up. Be counted. Go out there and vote. I know it's talking about a risk. I believe in safety. We wear a mask everywhere we go when we're in public. We social distance. But the fact of the matter is, is if I have to march with a damn gas mask to that poll in place and cast my vote for Joe Biden, I'm going to be there casting my vote for Joe Biden. Because Donald Trump is absolutely a death candidate. A death to our democracy, a death to freedom, a death to equality. Look at the Supreme Court. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, sick again. We don't know how long she is going to be able to withhold this. She is putting everything into holding up. But somebody is going to appoint another Supreme Court justice. Somebody is going to appoint more federal judges. The question is, do we want that someone to be Donald Trump and the Heritage Foundation, which is who, and the Federalist Society and all of these nut jobs, these right-wing idiots, QAnon. QAnon, as my husband th just threw in there, 
are these the type of people we want sitting on our court? The type of people who are going to say gay people aren't entitled to equality? The type of people who believe that Democrats are running a child sex ring out of a pizza parlor in Washington, D.C.? Can you really believe this bullshit? This is real. This is our real world right now. We have these people running for elected office who believe that the Democrats worship Satan, literally, and sacrifice children. That's our choices. This is Protocols of the Elders of Zion type of radical bullshit. This is Mein Kampf. This is absolute fucking insanity. Use your common sense. Look at it, because they are pulling your leg. And I know some of you might be offended by the language I've used, because maybe you consider yourself a devout Christian, or whatever. I respect that. Everyone has the right to their viewpoints. I consider myself a person of faith, but I'll admit, I don't use the word Christian anymore to describe me, because it has been so politicized. But if you're a person of faith, that's fine. Ignore the profanities that I throw out here, because... Sometimes I believe they make a point that needs to be made. But look at your examples. Does Donald Trump represent Jesus Christ to you? Does he represent someone who is following the example of Christ? A guy who has paid off porn stars, who's on wife number three, who had an affair on all of his wives up until this point, who runs casinos, who... I mean, this is your, this is your choice. D try to make it, if you want to make it religious, look at the example here. This is a disgusting example. This is Jerry Falwell Jr. and his, you know, wife fucking the pool boy. And yet saying that, j that you know, Donald Trump is, is a great representation of a Christian candidate. Well, I guess for Jerry Falwell that's probably true because Jerry Falwell wouldn't know a Christian candidate if he slapped him upside the head with a pool with, you know, a pool cleaner, a pool brush. I mean, he doesn't have a damn clue. Liberty University doesn't have a damn clue. They're all a bunch of right-wing morons. It's not about faith. If it were about faith, they'd be feeding the hungry instead of wanting to kick them off welfare. If it was about faith, they'd be wanting to welcome the immigrant instead of throwing children in cages. That's not faith. That's bigotry. That's hate. That's bullshit. That's exactly what it is, and it's time for us to stand up. I'm going to end this out because I know I've went on a long time, but the message was important. You know, pay attention. We're going to see a bump in Donald Trump's numbers coming out of the convention. It always happens. People, you know, rally behind their candidate when they see them on TV. Don't let this fool you. Don't let the numbers fool you. Whether the numbers look like Joe's got this in the bag or they look like Trump's got this in the bag, the fact of the matter is, is no one has it in the bag unless we go out and vote. We got to do something about it. At the end of the day, the White House is not Donald Trump's house. It's the people's house. This is not the Republicans' government. It is the people's government. We are a government for and by the people. And by God, it's time that we get out there and take it back. That we let them know that we want a better America. An America that lives up to its ideals of freedom and justice and equality for all. That we want a, an America that isn't buying into this right-wing, white nationalist, QAnon bullshit. That we are going to look at an America. And if you won't do it for us, if you won't make it better... We're going to put somebody else in. We're throwing your ass out on the streets because guess what? The politicians, the senators, the president, the congressmen, you don't work for them. They work for you. They're our employees. And in the words of the great Donald Trump, it's time we looked at them and said, you know what? You're fired. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please take to heart what I'm saying. Look into this. Get out and vote. Do the right thing. And above all, it's an election season. People are going to come at us hard, especially if you're a progressive. So my quote from Kesha, don't let the bastards get you down. Yeah, that's going to come really important over this election season because there's a lot of right-wing assholes out there who are going to put us down for everything we do. You can't even wear a mask without somebody saying you're a snowflake. Well, you know what? This snowflake don't melt. We're going to stand up and we're going to keep fighting. 
Anyway, best of luck to all of you. Stay safe until the next video. My name is Ari, and hopefully I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.